In this video, I'll be checking out the Faker Alice 80, which is a pretty interesting ergonomic keyboard with a knob. And this keyboard is actually sent over by WhatGeek. So if you guys are interested, do check out the links in the description below. They have two variants to this keyboard. They have a black and a white variant. And if you guys want the bare bones kit, they also have it on their website as well. So today again, we are checking out this Faker Alice 80 sent over by WhatGeek. Head down to whatgeek.com to check them out. So let's get this video started. Let's first take a look around the box. On the top left of the box, it says Faker Alice Ergonomic Gasket Keyboard. And on the bottom of the box, it says Model Alice 80. Printed on the top is the outline of how the keyboard looks like. And there's actually a window right here which you can look into. And there's a snippet of how the keyboard looks like. On this side, we can see I got the white version and I have the bottom lighting with the Gatoron G Pro switches inside. And on the back of the box, you have the product description for this keyboard, basically saying that it has Type-C connection, Bluetooth connection, 2.4GHz, it has a gasket mounted design, RGB lighting, a hot swappable function for the PCB, 8000mAh battery which is pretty big, and it says it's a 75% mechanical keyboard but I believe it's more of a 65%. And now time to unbox it. So in the box, you'll get the user manual for the keyboard and it includes a lot of stuff about it so you can pause if you want to read through this manual. Other than that, you'll get some really nice Faker branded keycap puller and switch puller which looks awesome. A USB cable which is type A to type C and they're actually gold plated and it's also a braided and coid cable which feels really nice in hand. And you also get this plastic cover with the Faker branding. I really like it when companies include this. It's basically like a cover or a protector for your keyboard when you're not using it. It protects it from dust and other stuff from getting inside. So this is the Faker Alice 80 and from the front you guys can see the layout which is the ergonomic layout and it looks pretty interesting to me. And on the right side you can see the separated arrow cluster with these three keys on top and of course a knob on the top right corner. And from holding it, I can feel that it's actually pretty heavy and hefty, but it is all plastic. It's heavy because there's a 8000 milliamp battery inside. And this is the side profile of the keyboard. You guys can see it looks pretty good with the cherry profile keycaps. But if you don't like the height of the keyboard, you actually can increase it because there are some adjustable feet right here. And there's actually two heights to these feet. And this is what the side with the knob looks like. And of course, you also have the adjustable feet underneath. This is what the front side of the keyboard looks like. You can see it's actually slanting upwards towards the middle and it looks pretty chunky. And this is what the back side of the keyboard looks like. You can see of the non-slip rubber feet and of course you have the two adjustable feet for the height and in the middle there's actually a plaque with the keyboard's name on it. And this is the top of the keyboard. You can see the Faker logo right here and in the middle you actually have your Type-C connection port your Windows and Mac kind of switcher and your on off switch and all the way right here tucked in this little thing is actually the 2.4 GHz dongle which is really nicely tucked in there and it's good that Faker provides a spot for you to keep this dongle. And by turning it on, this is what the RGB looks like. I think it looks really bright and saturated. I'm already filming with pretty bright lights but it looks really nice in my opinion. And if you want to further configure this keyboard to your liking, like the macros and RGB, there's also a software provided. So now moving on to the keycaps on this keyboard, these are some die sub PBT keycaps and I think that they are cherry profile keycaps and they come in this white and orange color scheme. I haven't seen these kind of colors on keycaps yet and they look pretty nice to me. The die sub printing on them do look pretty nice. The colors are pretty saturated and the print on them on the legends are sharp as well. And thickness wise, as you guys can see, it is pretty thick and I think it's around 1.5mm in thickness. And as for the switches in this keyboard, I did choose the Gatoron Pro 2.0 yellow switches. So these are the Pro series, means that they come loop from the factory. And as you guys can see, under these bigger types of keys are actually another type of switch. These are the Faker Holy Panda switches and there are some tactile switches. These are also loop from the factory. Overall, they are pretty smooth out of the box. I have no complaints here and you guys will hear it in the typing sound test. And for anyone who is wondering, this PCB is 5 pin hot swap and it's actually south facing so you won't have any interference with cherry profile keycaps. And taking a look at the stabilizers, they do appear to be some pretty standard plate mounted stabilizers and on further inspection, they do appear to be looped from the factory. 
from using them and typing on them i think that they are looped and tuned pretty nicely no complaints from my unit so far and if you're wondering what it looks like inside, I did open it up, I just removed the knob and I pop up the top case right here which were all held in with clips, there are no screws used in this case. And in the case, you can actually see that the PCB is in two pieces or there's actually two PCBs and there's a wire connecting it to the daughter board and I just disconnected that wire. So you can see right here on the table, there's actually three parts to this keyboard, you have your plate and your PCB, the bottom of the case and the top of the case. Taking a look at the bottom of the case right here, you guys can see all of the gaskets around the bottom of the case. So these are actually poron gaskets which help with the gasket mount of this keyboard. And if you take a look inside, there's actually this really thick piece of silicone dampener right here. And when I say really thick, it is really thick and this works well to help with sound dampening. Right underneath that huge piece of silicon is the battery for the keyboard and there's actually two right here again it's split up and as you can see in the middle right there is the daughter board. Taking a closer look at the PCB of this keyboard it's actually pretty interesting because it's actually split up into two sides or two pieces and it's connected in the middle with these two ribbon cables. And taking a look at the back of this PCB, we can confirm that these are Kale hot swap sockets which are 5 pin hot swap and they are south facing which is really nice. And if you take a look around the plate which I believe is made out of a PC like material which makes it quite flexible. You can see these pieces of rectangle which are actually silicone nibs or gaskets and they basically act like gaskets for the plate and it's quite flexible when typing. These silicone gaskets also sit on the poron gaskets inside the case. These poron gaskets are also present on the bottom side of the top case. In between the plate and the PCB, there is also a pre-cut piece of silicone right here that actually helps with sound dampening and it kind of acts like some plate form that are in other keyboards. So checking out what this keyboard looks like from the inside definitely was interesting and fun. But now let's move on to the typing sound test to hear how this keyboard sounds like. So that was the typing sound test and I think that this keyboard actually sounds great out of the box. Everything felt really smooth and there was no rattling out of the box. The only thing I noticed is that it actually sounds pretty muted because of all of that sound dampening silicone inside the keyboard. So I think if you want it to sound better or louder, you can actually take out some of that sound dampening. But overall, it's a pretty good keyboard for the price. This thing fully built is like around 100 US dollars. And if you want to build it yourself, you can of course get the bare bones kit and kit it out to your liking. And to sum it up, it's a pretty good ergonomic keyboard. And if you're interested, do check out the links in the description below. And that does it for this video guys, I want to say a quick thank you again to WhatGeek, do remember to check them out and thank you for them for sending over this keyboard for me to take a look at. So leave a like on this video if you liked it, dislike this video if you didn't like it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, I have even more content like this coming very soon. And as always, thanks for watching, goodbye guys.